trade with the communities of modern Wales. Four seventy nine, four pound you. Oh, we think about it. Um, leave it the overs. Yeah, we, we think about it. And service its oldest institutions. First time with ever shook hands with royalty. No. In the grip of a recession, this is the one place where a small idea can still turn into a big profit. The total business turnover is forecast to be just over £5 million. But the way we shop is changing. City centres are losing business to large supermarkets and retail parks. I've never seen it as uh, tough as it is now. You're destroying the livelihood of 700 people if you destroy Swansea Market. So how can it be right? How can it be right for the country? The market has to pull together as a unit, as a team, I guess. Filmed over the busiest period of the market's year. Gotcha. This series explores the fortunes and fates of the city's traders as they try and keep their business dreams alive. Three minutes late. You know, Paul, it's not good enough, is it, son? We've just got to pray that somebody wants what we've got, basically. <laughs> that's, that's all we can do. Well, look, look at all these lovely, happy people. You don't get that in Tesco. It's the beginning of January in Swansea. The city centre is now quiet and the bustle of Christmas a fading memory. The market has been open since the 27th of December, but the aisles have been largely empty. Welcome relief for head of security Eric Toms, clocking on after the New Year break. Good morning, Ian. Eric Rees from Swansea, City Centre Market. Just logging on for another day of abuse from the reprobates, fighting crime, cold, walking about, meeting and greeting. Have a nice day. Bye now. Three weeks ago, you wouldn't have been able to walk up this aisle um, without having to shove past lots and lots of people. You can see, you know, there's no queues. People are getting served quickly. I mean, look how clear this aisle is. So I, I expect this is the way January is going to be. For the traders, a quiet January is a difficult time, when a lack of customers squeezes business and profits. There are a lot of people whose livelihoods depend on the market. And if people are not coming in and buying and we lose our customers, then it could mean some weeks that we don't have any money. These will be lean times, there's no doubt about it. Without Christmas, these could be bankruptcy times. Across the aisles, traders are stepping up to the challenge, tightening their belts and adapting their businesses to the quiet market. We've got to try and encourage a little bit of growth, and um, we're looking to put on a few good deals and to grab them. You've got to do what you've got to do at the time, then. It's all about the offers. People walk past, they don't just shop with their eyes, you know, they shop with their, with their purses and their bullets as well. It's, it, it is a sign of the times. To survive in this market, you have to diversify. There's no good going on your knees and hoping that something's going to come right. You have to do things for yourself. At Sandy's Lunchbox, New Year begins with gifts from a well-deserved winter mini-break. This is the version of a salt and pepper pot. So we've all got salt and pepper set. You've all got salt. It reminds you of work, doesn't yeah, it? Lovely. <laughs> oh, that's Sandy Ellis has just returned from holiday and her first visit to North Africa. We had a nice little New Year break in Morocco, which I must say was very interesting. They thought I was Moroccan and they offered Rob 50,000, I mean 50,000 camels for me. Not 5,000, not 500, 50,000. Sandy's trip also opened her eyes to new foods and flavours and a possible new direction for the lunchbox. We have been inspired by the Moroccan tagines, and I think sometimes it doesn't matter how long you've been in a, in a certain game, um, is fresh eyes needed all the time. So Rob and I are going to do some experimenting at home with different things, and then some things we're going to introduce here. What's happening at Sandy's lunchbox is reflected across the city. Swansea is changing. New people are arriving, 
bringing different tastes, new styles, and in the case of one group, a lot of new business to the market. There are now over 3,000 Chinese people in Swansea, from second-generation Hong Kong businessmen through to wealthy students from Shanghai. Both groups have a keen interest in fresh produce and a very hands-on approach to selecting their food. Stop touching. This lady always touches. She touches all the time. She drives me nuts. I just shout at them. They, they just love to touch, to check the gills. And it's, 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 it's only them that do it. And it's not fair and other people that who's buying the fish, so I'm constantly shouting at them, you know? He's just, just dying in the touch of it. We're very different because um, the Chinese, we're very particular with our food. With English people, I think it's got to be fast and quick and easy. But with us, it's so fresh and looks nice and tasty. That's what we're looking for. Two pound money. Two pound money. Chinese interest is focused on fish and meat. Most of the market's butchers now supply chicken feet, necks, and even chicken gizzard. Very good. going to start them for me. How many did we put in the bag last time? 20 in the bag. <coughs> right. But what the Chinese do is this. You've got the gizzard here. You open the crop, and whatever's in the crop, which is seed and grass, if you take this away there, and that is dressed ready. And what you've got there now is red meat. It's 20 in here for a pound. And oh, they should be gone in about three hours. As soon as they see them out there, now the word goes round to here, and then everybody will come in for them. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's probably the right way up there, isn't it? That's right. Some will go to unusual lengths to attract the passing customer. It is that way. For Adrian Coakley Green, the arrival of Chinese New Year means giving his historic stall a distinctly oriental makeover. We are buying fish in for the Chinese community. They're so used to having very, very fresh and live fish back at home. Um, this is what they want, and this is what we're trying to source for them. Lousy bit of sellotape. Oh, look at that. Lousy. It's damp. Adrian's extra effort appears to have paid off. Yeah, they, got, they got here. Wow, very Holy fresh. <laughs> wow, it's a wow, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, we, when we see this, we, we definitely buy something in here. <laughs> we just compare the prices. The little one there is two for five pounds, this is three for ten pounds. Yeah. But this one looks much more fresh. You can see the eyes is still very bright and it's got glisten on the body, so it's a lot more fresher. <laughs> But the market's youngest fishmonger has bigger fish to fry than the Chinese. He's Robert's here. Is that Leith? That's Leith, yeah. Paul Rabin, owner of the recently established Market Place, is today opening a new stall in Neath Market several miles outside of Swansea. There's always been three fishmongers in the market, two were well established and one just always existed and that was it, but it was always there. And people have tried, they've come and gone, and no one's really made a go of it until now. I've seen a little opportunity to open up fishmongers in the market um, that doesn't have a fishmongers, so while I'm youngish, I'm going to have a little go and see, see how it pans out. I'm probably going to lose a few customers from the Swansea shop. I don't mind that. Um, it's the customers that I gain from um, maybe the other two fishmongers um, in Swansea Market. But it's competition, and as I say, I've seen an opportunity and I'm having a go. Neath Market, here we are. Let's do this. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, right. Whilst the other fishmongers still sleep, Paul has invested £20,000 to transform an abandoned card shop into his second fish store. It's been quite stressful. The easy part now is now. It's, it's up to us to do our job now, and, the, and, and that's what we'll do. Um, I'm not, this, is, this is why I'm not nervous about this. I'm not worried about this. This, this. this comes naturally to us now. Paul's new business fits in with his ambitious plan that could see outlets of the marketplace stretching across South Wales. Somewhere down the line, I would like Cardiff. Now, Cardiff has got one in there, um, very well inspected, uh, fishmongers. Um, and if there was an opportunity somewhere down the line, I would like to have a little go in there. But that means myself relocating. So I'm talking, I'm talking a good five years at least. A little water in the sea. 
this was an opportunity too good to pass up. I've gone for it. Fingers crossed another opportunity will present itself because I'm always looking forward uh, to progress. But at the same time, it's got to be financially viable to do it. So, uh, there we are. Marketplace is now open. But as the sun rises in Swansea, Paul's ambition has caused upset in the market. To cover two stalls, the marketplace has expanded its workforce, and for the second time in two years, Paul has poached staff from his rival, Neil Morgan. Well, Mark's left. Um, he's going to work for one of my competitors. So I've lost two staff to him. It's not a business tactic I'd ever use. It's not something I'd want anyone to go through, you know? It's not a, it's not a nice thing to do. Mark Rastater has shifted allegiance from Tucker's to the marketplace. My partner's got a son, he's 18, who lives with us. My daughter, I got I got my own daughter, she's 15, but she lives with her mother. Now you got bills to pay, you got food, you got, you got the rent, you got all, the, all these different things. Paul offered me this opportunity, it's more money, and I, I need it. I need, I need the money to get by. There we are, fishmongers now open in the market. If you get that in when you're buying, you give you 10% off, right? Fresh fish. I've always been a grafter, to be honest, and I believe that uh, you, you, you've got to work hard, nothing will fall in your lap. If you want something, you've got to go up and get it. And, uh, you know, it's hard work. If you think you've made it, that's when the standards start slipping. So uh, we're always looking to improve and, uh, and progress. Here we are, my friend. The fishmongers just opened in the market. If you like fresh fish, give this in when you buy and they'll give you 10% off, right? You can use it all week. Oh, all right. Are, uh, all the week. All week, use it. Yes, fresh fish. Right. Give that in Paul buy. isn't the only one starting fresh in the new year. In a garage just south of Aberystwyth, a new business is beginning for David Court three weeks after his wedding favours shop was forced to close in the market. Well, we've been home and uh, after a bit of recuperation, we've done some thinking and some working and now I'm rebuilding from scratch. And this is what it looks like and feels like to do things from scratch. It's slow, it's hard, it's cold, it's dirty and it's boring. But it's going to happen because I'm going to make it happen. It makes you get up in the morning and go to work with a will because if it's either that or lose everything, well, you don't have much choice, so you get on with it. Quite an incentive. David's new business is in machine-cut Welsh love spoons. Crafting up to 50 a day, he has begun selling into gift shops across the country. Today's destination is Caerphilly. This one is a sweet shop, so I can't sell to them. There's a shop over there called Nice, which looks like a gift shop. I might give them a look. Ah, Shop Manor, Welsh Books. I have sold to Welsh bookshops before. I really ought to give her a look. I think I'll call in and see whether I can do something here. Hello. Hello. My name is David. What we've done, we've been making love spoons for 27 years. Mm -hmm. And this is the third time that Britain has gone into recession in that time. <laughs> so you're the jinx. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a range of spoons which are designed to be affordable to the cash-strapped visitor. So that's what we're offering. Okay. Um, and is that something you'd be interested in? It is an area that I would like to branch out into, um, but obviously it does all come down to cost. OK, that simple. so I really need to call either at the busy time of the year or this time next year. Um, <laughs> yes. I walk each day as far as I have to walk. Um, it's like Renald Fiennes in the South Pole. If you don't want to die, you have to just keep walking. And I'm in a similar position. I've got to survive financially. So to do that, I keep walking and I sell my spoons. My name is David Court. I make Welsh love spoons. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. So what I've got to offer you is really some very strong, simple designs of love spoons. Do they come in white at all? Can you, or does it only this colour? The... No, I can do them in the white, which only is... Only that it would look more shabby chic in my yes. shop, which is the look. When poplar comes in the white, it looks like this. Yeah. Right. Well, let me say, there's lovely quality. Thank you very much. But at the moment, I don't have to say no. That's all right. I've got a mortgage to pay, loans to repay, car to run, a wife to support. Uh, but essentially, now where the dickens am I? I'm forever getting lost. I'm not very good at this sort of thing. 
I've been making and selling love spoons for 27 years now, so oh quite a lot of experience uh, commercially, not uh, sitting in a shed whittling particularly. <laughs> We've changed our design over the years. We've made it a little bit more rounded, a little bit shorter. I can deliver you a display of spoons instantly if you would like one. But it would depend on the price. <laughs> <laughs> OK, then. If, when bad stuff happens, you roll over and you're dead, you're dead. But if you do not accept being dead, because that's not what you want, you think, no, I'm not going to do dead. I'm going to do get back up face the strongest wind, wherever it's coming from, if necessary, and that is the direction I'm going in, and I'm going to keep going in it until I get what I want. Why do you like to come over here? What's the name of your company? It's the Gift of Wales. We oh, make Welsh right. love spoons. When I showed that to St Fagans, their expression was, you get a lot of spoon for your money, don't mm. you? That is only £2.99, handmade in Wales. Is that something you'd like to go yes, with? Yes, I think so, yes. I think it would be very interested. Have a safe trip. Thank you, Mandy. All Take the best. Care. And Take you. care. Andrew, bye-bye now. Bye-bye. They've accepted my offer. They will make money out of it. I will make money out of it going forward. And so, all's well that ends well. So that's it, really. David's freedom to travel is the envy of some traders, stuck behind their stalls in an empty New Year market. Today has been very quiet. Um, we expected it to be busy because it was Saturday, but it's more quiet than usual. So. Emily Poole's new Chocoholics shop has just made it through Christmas. A quiet January has now forced her to make a big decision. I've decided to shut the shop and try other ventures. Things that I'll go into more of the workshops and wholesale things and just see if that works out better. Just because uh, at the moment the shop isn't really paying for itself and I think it'd be better to do other things for it. After 10 weeks, Swansea is losing its only handmade organic chocolate shop as Emily is unable to pay her rent. Well, today I've had one sale and then the bus fare cost me almost as much as the sale. So today wasn't really enough for the overhead of the shop. Hello. How are you? Oh, it's that time again. When you do see businesses starting to fail, it's not pleasant when they discover that maybe the product isn't what people want. You know, you see some guys who take it really personally, that it's like almost a, you know, a rejection, almost, of, of how they do things. Never thought I'd get stressed out about money. <laughs> but um, if I carry on from now, then I will be getting into quite a bit of debt. The cycle of life in Swansea Market has made another turn. Emily will head back to her office job. Just as one stall comes to the end of its life, another is about to begin. On the outskirts of Swansea, a very different handmade product is being prepared, and it promises to make the market a little bit more diverse. And this was our first, which is our little witch's gift shop. How does all the, the woodworky bits? The cushion, I made the cushion. And it's one of my designs that I've just put together myself. Howell and Julia Jeffries are preparing to open Swansea's first artisanal doll's house store. Not for children. I consider our doll's houses to be more artisans, collectors, miniature houses, rather than doll's houses. We don't do doll's houses. We do miniature houses for adults. Everything is to the scale as a real house. Everything you have in the real world, <laughs> You yeah. can have in miniature world. Everything, the water, everything. The world that Howell and Julia painstakingly create through their hand-built houses is slightly different from modern-day Swansea. It's ours is more fantasy. I was more fantasy, because we like the wizard and wands, we like the dragons, we like the caves, we like yeah. the King Arthur. 
Because we like castles in real life, so we'll go and visit these castles. We like the nights, we like watching TV programmes. I don't think I'm eccentric, but probably if people were looking in, then yeah. <laughs> Julie will keep her job as a psychiatric nurse when the store opens. Howell has already left his job as a carpenter to get the dolls prepared. I think it's nice to space them out so that you can appreciate the way their clothes are and, and just the whole look of them. You've even got her little tights look and the buckles on her shoes. They definitely demand their own space. They're not something that you just shove in. They're works of art in their own right. I put my hand on heart and say, this stall is more like a gallery. Mm. It's to show what we can do, and you can be part of it. Of course, it's got to make money to take us mm. over, but we're not in it to make a fortune. We're in it because it's a dream. Fifteen miles away in Port Talbot, another new product is being prepared for the market. Should I peel all these for you? Yeah, get all the seeds out, that's good. Sandy Ellis and her boyfriend Rob are tackling their first Moroccan tagine, adding their own distinctly Welsh touch. We've decided that um, we're going to go halfway, half for Talbot and half Marrakesh. There's some things that we wanted to throw in that we like, that maybe isn't in the recipe. As you can tell by this curvy girl figure, I like potatoes, so he's put extra in, just for me. <laughs> the arrival of the tagine has also changed the dynamic in the kitchen, with Sandy taking a rare back seat. I might be the queen of the shop, but Rob's the king of the kitchen. He's I love um, practicing on different uh, recipes. We got different ways time. sometimes of doing things well. And so when I'm cooking, um, to be fair, Rob helps, but he doesn't interfere, even if he thinks he knows better. Um, and when Rob's cooking, I, I, you know, respect that. There's lots of things I taught him. And um, when we were boyfriend and girlfriend, he used to text me and say he was cooking something sandy style. <laughs> In other words, plenty of butter. <clears throat> Sandy's Moroccan theme is not only new for the market, it's a big departure from her own culinary roots. I don't remember so much multicultural when I was a girl. I don't remember having a pizza, to be honest with you, until I was well in my teens. So for me, personally, my uh, taste of trying different things has come in my adult life and not as a child. The next day, Swansea wakes up to a blanket of snow. The prospects for Sandy's tagine being a success suddenly seem under threat. We made the tagine last night and it all went well and lovely and now the snow fall means probably no bug is going to taste it. <laughs> Heavy snow has prevented not only customers from reaching the market, half of the stalls remain closed as well. And so if the mountain won't come to Mohammed, then Mohammed must go to the mountain and Sandy must take her tagine to the masses. What we're doing now is um, I've warmed some of the tagine. Uh, we're going to put it in these little takeaway uh, polystyrene cups to keep it hot, and then we're going to go outside and um, uh, give it to some of the, uh, the passers-by, obviously, as a free taster. Right, Rob, you carry them. Yeah, hon. OK, ready? We've got something new in the market today. I'd like you to try it. Just giving away some free tasters. Do you like that? Very nice. Excuse me, sir. Could I just give you one of these to try? It's homemade, but it's made through the original recipe. 
Yeah. It's quite nice, actually. Yeah. yeah. Try you, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah, it's a bit too, yes, yeah. and well, you wanted to try you, on you? <laughs> yes, uh, it is quite nice. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, excuse me, people. Mm. Shall we? Actually? All right. Yeah. This is a Moroccan. Moroccan dish. Okay. Okay. okay, this is a tagine. It's got apricots and sultanas in it. Would you like to try one, sir? It's a Moroccan tagine. What do you think? It's quite sweet, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah? It's all spicy. Yeah, we yeah. go for spicy Yes, yeah, like I saw that. And that's why you chose him. <laughs> super cold, man. But it is good, it is good. It is good, it is good. It is good. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like completely different to all you yeah. guys. Yeah. 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 With a positive response on the streets, Sandy now needs to get her regulars on board. Vicky, if we can have a dish, cos Brenda's going to try the tagine. She only wants a small little amount, because she's a bit of a stickler of sticking to the same amount. That's enough. There we go. All right. In general, I'm not one for foreign foods. I'm a, I couldn't eat spaghetti to save my life. No, I love the cabbage and I love my sprouts. But I've got high cholesterol and I, I can't, and I'm on morphine tablets and I can't eat a lot of them. Is it hot, hot, yeah, is it? Okay. Just this. Okay. If I like that. Jim? Yeah. Oh, I knew you would. Now you've surprised me now. See? No, you know, you old dear, sometimes you need to kick up the bum to get you into gear to change you where you're thinking. You'll be careful. You reminded right? me too much of my mother, Brent. Sometimes I'll eat a good thing, OK? <laughs> OK. Beautiful. Sums up from Brenda. If it's all right for Brenda, it's all right for the masses, isn't it, Brent? This is nice. Sandy's lunchbox has turned another corner and her business will continue. For over eight centuries, this is how the market has worked in the city centre. Those with the right idea at the right time have thrived under its domed roof. What separates the market, people, is that we work hard, we know what we've got to do. None of the businesses in the market, you have money for nothing. If you know your business and, and you have confidence in what you're selling, you've got a very good chance of earning a living out of the market. But you won't get a bright future if you don't put the work in. Ambition and hard work. The two pillars of market life. And just as generations of traders before have given themselves to their businesses, so the new traders of today are doing the same. We've done it right. It's hard to gauge. Crack on again tomorrow. There's always room for improvement. And to do that, I've got to provide a, a cracking service to customers with uh, fresh fish, and that's what I'm looking to do. And I'll come in and, and give 100% every day. In amongst the struggling high street and the sprawling retail park, Swansea Market stands alone in the city as the place where fortunes can be made and the dreams of owning a small business still realised. This is what I wanted to do. Have a shop and sell my hobbies. At some point in life, you've got to grab your, the dream and go with it. And you can see all the episodes from this series on the BBC iPlayer.